I've got seven side hustles here that I personally have done either in my past or I'm actually paying someone right now to do for me. Now, the first one we're going to get into today is actually a side hustle that I didn't even realize was a side hustle because I started doing side hustles even before I got a full-time job. So going back to when I was a child, I actually participated in a bunch of different sports. I played soccer, football, wrestled, and I played baseball and maybe a couple years of tennis, but I loved just being athletic, being involved in sports. And at the young age of just 13 years old, I was given the opportunity to umpire a little league baseball games. Now this was just the start. I actually grew that up to the point where I started umpiring Babe Ruth games as I started to get older. When I got out of high school, I actually started umpiring those games as well as college games, as well as young adults and even 55 and up adult league baseball games. Now this is certainly a side hustle that requires work, but that cliche saying is absolutely true. If you love what you're doing, you're not gonna work another day in your life. And that's exactly how I felt when I was refereeing. I was still being allowed to stay around what I loved the most, which was sports. I wasn't partaking necessarily in the sport, but I was able to see all of the young folks and sometimes older folks Folks, participate in a sport that they love. And bear in mind here, obviously when I first got started at 13 years old, it was 15 or 20 bucks a game and the games were about two hours or maybe an hour and a half long. If you do the math, it's not the best hourly wage, but at 12 years old, 13 years old, I couldn't complain. But I could tell you when I got up to the highest level, I was earning north of $60 an hour. But again, guys, side hustle here. I was only doing this in the evenings and getting some good hours on weekends. It's not a full-time job, but it's certainly a good side hustle to be able to implement, especially if you're someone that loves sports and you're working just a normal nine to five. But enough about refereeing, let's jump into number two. Number two is Turo. If you've not heard of Turo, I would be surprised at this point. It's a pretty common app that a lot of people use for flexibility and extra income. This particular side hustle could actually be relatively passive. Now I say relatively passive because there will be some kind of work on your behalf that you will need to do, but there are some people on the app, Turo again, that actually fully operate their business remote. So what exactly is Turl? I can actually relate it a lot to Airbnb where you're sharing your house or a, an apartment and renting it out to someone else. Very similar to Uber as well where you are taking advantage of a much more convenient taxi ride than just the traditional old school taxi. Well, Turo is actually where you either offer one of your cars up for someone to rent or you rent someone else's car, giving you the flexibility to earn income off of additional vehicles. Now, from a consumer standpoint, I absolutely love Turo. It's so much easier than trying to rent from a large rental company. And on top of that, I actually get to pick my physical vehicle that I want to rent. I can rent a very, very cheap rundown Honda Accord or Civic, or I can go super bougie and rent an exotic car. I can kind of go anywhere in between. Now, a typical car rental company, you're just gonna get whatever they give you. Now, from a side hustler's perspective, I actually bought a brand new Porsche. Back when I was a high school teacher, I actually even drove it to class oftentimes to be able to exchange keys to people that were actually renting the car. The downside with Turo now though is it can be saturated. And on top of that, I had a couple bad experiences on Turo with people trying to specifically rent that Porsche. But beyond that, if you're smart enough with it, just like any other business, and you do it the right way, Turo could be a great passive income source. So currently, I still use Turo on any kind of vacation I take or any kind of work-related trip that I travel to another state for. Now, when it comes to a side hustle, I don't participate in Turo anymore. It's not that I don't suggest you do so. I would just make sure that you do so carefully. One side hustle that I haven't taken advantage of from a side hustler's perspective, but more from a consumer perspective, I actually pay someone pretty regularly for is my third side hustle and that's YouTube thumbnails. Now this actually may be a little bit funky for those folks that don't make YouTube videos, but what I can tell you is I have a full-time videographer and editor on staff. The amount of time that it takes him to edit is way more useful for his time than actually paying him an hour or two to create a YouTube thumbnail. Now, based on what I'm actually paying him for his annual salary, you just do some quick math and realize that I'm actually paying him more to create a thumbnail and actually taking away time from his day-to-day -day work when I could just actually outsource that to Fiverr, which is what I do. And on a lot of my thumbnails, I outsource to Fiverr for a small cost, anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks tops for a YouTube thumbnail. 
similar to the YouTube thumbnails, I can outsource to someone else that will do it for a cheaper price than what technically my hourly rate would be. Another example would be the next side hustle that is actually something that if I was working full time or just working the nine to five and not making a tremendous amount of income, this would be something that I would actually consider doing. It's either WAG or Rover. Now, WAG or Rover, if you haven't heard of them, is actually a side hustle that I pay someone three times a week to come to my house, grab my dogs, take them out for a walk, and bring them back. And she actually makes enough money just from WAG and Rover to be her full-time job. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a huge dog lover and personally think it would be a fun job to take advantage of, especially, again, if you're working a nine to five and you could do this after hours or on weekends, it's a good source of income to stack up. Now the next side hustle does kind of relate to real estate in a sense. Let's say if you are in that position where you are doing real estate on the side, maybe as a side hustle and aren't finding a ton of success, you're still working your nine to five job, but you're just trying to find some other sources of income. This could be a quick, easy, painless opportunity. And if you've made some connections in the real estate world, could be highly profitable. So with that being said, the fifth side hustle that I'm gonna be discussing with you guys today is notary services. The reason why I bring up notary services here as a side hustle is you really can't get any cheaper or get another side hustle as quick as you can become a notary. In most states, obviously every single state will differ, but in the state of Texas, for example, you've just got to take a three hour course and pay less than $100 and wait for your certificate to come. You can get hired really from anyone for any kind of notary service. You show up to the location, have those folks sign the required documents, and afterwards you head back to your house and either scan it over to them or you send it via FedEx or UPS and bam, you're done. Any one of those could range from maybe $25 per service all the way up to 200 to 250. A lot of people line these up so much in a day, maybe even as their full-time hustle to the point where they're making thousands of thousands of dollars a month. I actually even know someone that makes an entire living better than me with a master's degree as a high school teacher, just as a mobile notary. So again, guys, the reason I love this type of side hustle, very, very low barrier of entry or amount of time that is required. To compare that to maybe getting a real estate license in the state of Texas, which isn't even the most difficult thing whatsoever, it's far easier than getting a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, but only a three hour course or comparably to maybe 100 plus hours to get your real estate courses done. Now, before I get to my sixth side hustle here, I do want to stop and let you guys know almost every single thing that I've mentioned so far today requires one thing and one thing more than anything else here, and that's networking. Before you even get started trying to narrow down what you want to do, make sure that you are comfortable networking and being more of an extrovert, I'm not saying that you can't be an introvert, but get yourself out there and start networking with whatever kind of side hustle you want to take a part in. Now, with that being said, it certainly plays a role in my sixth side hustle. And that's something that I participated in when I was in high school, as well as when I was in college, and that's tutoring. Now, tutoring can actually be something, if you set it up right and you set it up well, could be a highly lucrative model. I actually know prior math teachers that quit teaching math with a master's degree and a full-time job at a local high school or maybe a community college and had enough of a network to where all they did was tutor and they made a substantial amount more tutoring than they actually did working full-time. Now, the reason is, is if you think a private coach, and that's essentially what a tutor is, you're gonna be paying a ton of money for that private coach, or in this case, a tutor. If I needed a real estate coach and I needed a real estate coach to take me to my next level, I would be paying a substantial amount of money. I actually even have a real estate coach right now that only does about a call a week for 30 minutes, so total of maybe two hours a month, and I pay him about $100 an hour. Do the math, there is a huge opportunity there. Now the thing with tutoring though, is you've got to really focus on the right type of people. Me personally, as a college student, I didn't really have the funds to pay for tutoring as a college student, but let's say I'm an eighth grader and my parents are in a well-off neighborhood. If you network or even do door-to-door -door sales and let people know that, hey, I've got this extensive math background or English background or science background, and you approach the right type of people, the right type of people with the right type of money could be very lucrative when we're talking about tutoring. So with this last and final side hustle, it's actually one that I came across just doing some research online. And I can tell you it's something that no one is doing. It's actually reviewing Amazon products, but not just leaving a review, leaving a video review. Now all of us have the very same thing here. It's a cell phone. 
okay? You can pull out your cell phone once you have the product. Once you have the product, actually do a self video review of the product. You upload it to Amazon and they actually, based on the amount of time and people that watch your particular review, will actually give you a portion of the product when it's sold based on viewership. Now to give you a quick analysis here, if you go to a particular item on Amazon that you are interested in, okay? First of all, you wanna make sure that it is reviewed often. As we all know, we do not leave reviews. The majority of folks do not leave reviews. So if you're looking at something that has 1,000, 5,000, or 10,000 reviews, highly likely that those reviews are obviously folks that purchased the product, but a large portion of the folks that actually purchased the products didn't even leave a review. So you can tell how many people are actually buying the product, then you go down to the video review. Some of them don't even have a video review. You could actually be the only person as far as competition for that particular product. And again, low barrier of entry here, guys. If you have a cell phone that can form decent quality video, that's all you need. Now, yes, you may need the product, but as we all know, you can purchase the product, do a quick review on it, upload it, and then return it. Now this is a side hustle that I have very little experience in. I personally haven't done myself. I was actually just doing some research as far as what other side hustles people are doing. And this one actually strikes gold to me. So with that being said, guys, these are not a do or die list of side hustles. For 2023, I think any one of these could be a great opportunity for yourself. Obviously, you've gotta find out what you love and what you wanna do, but any of these could be supplemented with a full-time job. And eventually, if you treat it right and you treat it like a business, which it should be, you could actually transition from just doing this as a side hustle to be in a similar position to where I am, where I no longer have side hustles. I no longer have to have a side hustle because my side hustle of being a real estate agent as well as a real estate investor has become, yes, my full-time hustle.